Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome back to Piccadilly Sidings. Now, you might be wondering what's happened for the past two weeks. There's been no videos. Well, the thing is, um, the two videos that I would plan to put up, there was an absolute disaster that took place. The first thing I'll explain very briefly shortly about that, but the item failed and um, had to be got rid of. And um, when I chose to do a different video about something slightly different, I ordered it and sadly it didn't arrive in time. So I couldn't do the video on that one either. And I hadn't really got anything else to do the video on prepared. Um, so that's the way life is sometimes. So well, hopefully this one will compensate and um, have an element of Christmassy thing as well. So let's go on with the first bit. Well, there are a couple of new arrivals. I've rejoined the Backman Collectors Club and received this 10 ton wagon. I'm just taking you up to the layout and you might notice just there last year's wagon, which was the 8 ton wagon. So next year's is probably going to be the 12 ton wagon, but we'll see. But um, I'm very impressed with these. The other one is certainly a very high quality wagon. It runs beautifully. Um, this one hasn't even come out of the box yet, so this will start to appear on the layout very, very shortly. Probably won't get weathered straight away, but probably will do in time. OK, on to the next bit. I'm looking at the lights that we've got here now, as I fitted in the last uh, double O gauge video. And as I said at the time that I would order three more um, to replace the one that has gone out just over there that one and also to put a couple more in um, so i would have one just there behind the signal or around the signal and one at the top of the path so that would go in around that area and then this one that's failed i would then put it on this platform so at least i'm using it okay however Sadly, all of the three lights, every single one of them, didn't work. I put the, the resistor on them. Um, it recommended that I work them with 6 volts, but with the resistor it would work from 12 to 16 volts. Not so lucky. So I'm in discussions with the eBay seller, and we'll see what happens with that. I will keep you informed this has a very big um uh smack of deja vu about it remember the tankers <laughs> right so you can see now we've got a new arrival on the layout we've got a hornby terrier in the um i'm not sure what that stands for to be honest with you maybe somebody can tell me in the comments but uh, i like this green one and uh, i did have another terrier of a different brand and that will remain nameless as will the place where i got it from and um, anybody mentioning anything in the comments about that will be removed so please please don't comment on the previous terrier if you think you know where it, who, what it is or anything but it failed big time um so it had to go and um I thought I'm not going to take another chance so I bought the Hornby one and so let's take a look at this I'm not going to do a full unboxing as you can appreciate because you know it's a Hornby box so let's get it out of the box have a look at it and um, then we'll get it on the rolling road all right let's talk in a minute well I have to say this is absolutely beautiful I mean the detail on that and I think Hornby have really raised their game on the detailing front over the last few years. And yes, I know some of these terriers have come in for a little bit of a critical comments or had some critical comments over the past few months. Um, but I'm loving that. Absolutely loving it. So it's it's just absolutely gorgeous. And I mean, look at the cab in there. I mean that would take some doing. Yes, I know that the the light bar, the window bars, uh, go across as a big block. I know that, but to be honest with you, when I put a driver in there, 
and one's hanging outside the door and one's the other side, you're not really going to notice it. And I really don't see, I don't see what the problem is, to be honest. But I'm absolutely loving that. That is absolutely incredible. So let's get it on the rolling road and have a look and see how it runs. Now, some of you may know that my six pin uh, decoder is this Backman, um, Backman one made by Zemo. And these are gorgeous chips, as are all Zemo chips. OK, so that would be my choice. However, um, I have to be honest with you, I have had the body off this and I did try to fit the decoder inside, but it is just a fraction too long. Um, it won't sit in the space provided. So what I've done is ordered a u um, wired sound decoder, which you might think, well, you're never going to get that in there, John, because people have said the space is too small. Well, actually, it isn't. So let's get it moving. Coming up to the 20% mark. There you go. Now, remember, this is on DC. All right. Some of you might be wondering, how can I just connect up a DC controller? Well, all my all my layouts and controllers have these plug and play um, sockets and plugs. So all those are connected to either layouts or rolling roads or all that sort of stuff. They've got the male end and then the female end is connected up to the controller, whatever that might be. So obviously I've got the Z21. Um, I've got the um, Hornby Select. Uh, in this case, it's the Gage Master Combi. Um, but, uh, you know, I can plug and play whatever I want. So let's see the Terrier moving. All right, so here she comes. Now that is on DC. And that is running like a dream. And take it back again the other way. No stuttering, no jumping about. It just works. So I'm more than happy with that. And at the end of the day, that's what we buy these locomotives for, isn't it? I'm so happy with that. I really am. So obviously that is going to have the sound decoder fitted and um, I'll show you now on the YouTube's website. Right, here we are on the YouTube's website and you might be wondering, um, how can I find out whether the sound decoder will fit? Because the reason is, if you look down the left hand side here, there, install guides. So you click that one and you get all the different guides for the different locomotives. Now let's scroll up and find the Terrier. Right, there it is just there. So I'm going to click on that. And you'll notice there are three different versions of this install guide. So you've got the Dapple O gauge and N gauge, but I'm going to be looking at the 00 Hornby one. So I'm going to click on that. And then when you look down here, it's got picture by picture how to go about doing it. Now, I'm not going to take mine off the body off mine right now to show you. But what I will do is show you what I've done to compensate. Now, if I take you down, you'll notice if you have got a Hornby Terrier, you've, you're going to have this clip just inside here. If I zoom that a little bit bigger, you'll notice that the decoder sits in there. Right, that's the motor mount that comes with the Hornby Terrier. So you can see this part here is that bit just there. And what they've done is they've just cut it just before the screw, just at that point there. Hopefully you can make that out. But I didn't like the idea of destroying this particular part. So what I've done is replicated that in, th in a 3D mould and then just um, finished it in a stub end. So I've got all the screw holes that I need at the end there, and I can put that in in replacement 
and still have plenty of space to fit the decoder. So I'll just zoom down to what they've done as a final fit. So there you can see you've got the wired decoder coming in underneath, um, covered in the yellow gap capped on tape. That's hardwired to the motor. So if you're not very keen on resoldering or hardwiring to the locomotive, then this perhaps isn't the install for yourself. But then we have a small speaker on the top and you can see it totally encloses that little area there perfectly and it will fit beautifully inside the body with no issues whatsoever. So there is some slight modifications to be done. There you go. There's another picture of it just there. But I think actually that's going to be a very, very easy install. Now, there is a slightly sad part about this now is that um, I've been in touch with you choose and I need an MX648 and sadly they don't have any in stock at the moment. So I'm having to go on a wait list um, for when they arrive and they will send, send me one out. OK, so unfortunately, um, I can't include the Terrier in this little running session that I'm going to do right now, uh, but um, I'm sure you'll see it on the layout in the near future. All right. Well, I do hope you understand where I'm coming from now. There's been so many things go wrong with things not turning up or things not working or things failing or whatever, whatever, whatever. We'll try and keep smiling, but um, I'll do a bit of a story and a bit of a running session now. So just because it's Christmas, I'm going to keep the lights on and keep a bit of a dark nighttime feel to this. So just sit back and enjoy. Well, it had been a hard day here at Piccadilly Siding Station and Sam was very tired, but he had an idea. He knew somebody else would be very, very tired this time of the year and was incredibly busy. So he had this thought, what could we buy Santa for Christmas? And he thought he would ask everybody that came past. Sam set about finding out what people thought Santa would like for Christmas. Here, George, I got a minute. What is it, Sam? What is it? Well, I've got an idea. What, what do you think Santa would like for Christmas? Well, I don't know. I've just come from Gloucester all the way with this thundering coach and this silly little engine, and I'm tired and I want a cup of tea. Well, he didn't get very much luck there, did he? So the first driver pulls away, and Sam still has no answers to what Santa would like for Christmas. Well, the next train pulled into the station, and it was a new driver, and he was a little bit nervous about stopping just in the right place. But he did it. Well, that was really grand, that. You stopped the train just in the right place. How are you today, sir? I'm all right. I am, I really am. And um, I've got a lot of things to do in my brain, but I'm all right. Well, I've got a question for you. I've got a question for you. What is it? What do you think Santa would like for Christmas? Well, that's a question, isn't it? I think I would buy Santa a box of cornflakes. Right, that's great. Thank you for that. You can go, I think. I'm going to blow the whistle. Off you go with a silly answer like that box of cornflakes. What do you think I am? Well, Sam wasn't impressed with that answer of a box of cornflakes. This was going to prove to be quite tricky, I think. Well, train after train passed and didn't even get a chance to see what Santa would like.
Sun didn't even stop. Well, Sam was getting quite fed up, as you can appreciate. He'd had trains not stopping, he'd had some very silly answers. But then the 33 with the brand new Bachman Madden arrived and stopped right in front of Sam. Oh, am I glad to see you! <laughs> well, the driver wasn't impressed and blasted his horn. In fact, he did it again. Hey, what should we buy Santa for Christmas? Well, that's a tough question, I have to say. What about if we buy him a loaf of bread and he can make himself some toast and a flask for going round and so he can have a cup of tea on Christmas Eve when he's travelling from place to place? Well, Sam thought that's probably not a bad idea, but it's not the greatest idea. He still was quite stumped and the driver was pulled away. There with the new Batman Madden. Well, Sam had completely had enough. All the silly answers, and he thought the best one he'd had was that you should buy Santa a flask so he can make a cup of tea and a loaf of bread so he can make some toast. And then the newest driver pulled into the station and they were resting. John. What do you think we should buy Santa for Christmas? And you could tell in his voice he'd had enough. And John told him something that she hadn't thought of. Wow, that's a good idea. So the little Rustin driver went off to seek some help because he couldn't do this by himself. This was getting exciting now, because John had gone to get Ian, the driver of the 66. What could it be? That they need the most powerful loco in the fleet to go and get Santa's present. Well, Ian, John and Sam all had a big discussion about how they were going to do this. Leave it to me said, we'll sort it. Well, people gathered from far and wide. All the white plastic people come and join Sam. Well, three of them anyway. But not that many people know Santa because... He just comes and goes. It, well, it was that time when Santa, Santa's present was being brought into shot. What could it be, they thought? What could it be that they needed a 66 to pull it? None of the other locos were strong enough. Well, the first gift was being brought in. What would it be? Any guesses, anybody? Well, Santa normally has a mince pie. So we have got the biggest mince pie that you would ever find in the world. In fact, it was thought that it would take him at least all night just to eat it. And he probably wouldn't have time to deliver any presents. So we've got him a mince pie. Secondly... Anticipation builds. It's not just Santa doing the work. It is the reindeer too. So, a truck full of sugar. Yes, I know it's not politically correct in this day and age, 
but the reindeer still like it and they have to have a lot of energy to travel all over the world. So they thought a bucket full or a wagon full of sugar. Next. What on earth is that? Well, even Santa needs to protect himself. So Santa, we've got you a little bottle of hand sanitizer. So just to keep yourself safe, but on with the hand sanitizer. Santa, we've brought you a face mask so you can enjoy the same privileges that we all do. I'll put that down for one side for you. And yet, there's still more. I wonder what it could be. I think someone's gonna have to drive off. Well, all went quiet again. So everybody wondered what Santa's last present would be. Well, the little Ruston driver came back and he struggled to pull it in. He really needed the 66, but he wanted to do it all by himself. Here it comes. What is it? <gasps> wow! It's a cup so Santa can have a cup of tea and it's got a picture of him on it as well. That's very exciting. Very exciting indeed. But along with that, there is, yes, you've guessed it, it's a little teapot. Well, perhaps a big teapot actually. But Santa can now have not only a cup of tea, but you can also have a mince pie, have some sugar for his reindeers, but keep himself safe at the same time whilst he delivers all of our presents at Christmas. Well, I hope you enjoyed that bizarre little story about Santa's gift. And I hope you have a really, really lovely Christmas and a happy new year. From Piccadilly Sidings, take care and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.